He is. He's got points everywhere. Just stacked. We got him, dude. Giant. Yeah. waited years for this this day right here I've... bulls screaming in the background like this is the first time I've actually felt like that feeling you felt as a little kid but night before Christmas like I, we say that but like I haven't felt this way in a long long time So Levi and I met in a hunting camp about 12 years ago, and right away our, our hunting styles and kind of mentalities really meshed well. You just don't ever know when you're gonna draw a tag like this. I've waited my whole life. So when I got the news, um, got that text from Dustin, it was kind of a surreal moment. It didn't sink in right away, but I thought about it every day until the hunt started. Yeah, I haven't been waiting all year, like, you know, since we found out. And <clears throat> like, I get to do it a lot, but, I mean, not as much as I'd like to out here, but, I mean, whether I'm shooting or not, like, it's just a cool place. And it's going to be a special week. These are 360s, 7x6. Yeah. Look at this. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I don't think you get to a place like this or go on a hunt like this by accident. You know, there's a lot of planning, a lot of applying. Um, the dream has to be there before something like this happens. I mean, that dream has to spark all these actions. Um, so once we're here, um, then you realize the opportunity, the possibilities, the potential that lives in this area, in these mountains. And that is a true world-class elk. Um, that's the potential here. I had to kind of change my mindset a little bit and, and what I was going to let go because this area holds a lot of giant elk. And so I had to really talk to myself over the last few months to mold that mentality of we're here for something extremely special. And if at the end of the season we haven't found it, we got to be able to walk away with nothing. Um, and that was kind of the mindset I had of I'm either going to find the bull of a lifetime or we're gonna have a great September and we're gonna go home. Well, went from one extreme to the next, bud. No joke. From on fire. Bulls everywhere yesterday morning to miles of silence. We, I don't know how far we can see, but we can't see an elk. No, for miles. Or hear one. It's just 90 degrees and completely shut down. And if this weather don't break, it might be like this for the rest of the hunt. Yeah. Hopefully that breaks. So this area is known to have some of the biggest bulls in the state and Levi and I's style being so similar, uh, if there was an area that I could find that was going to be really difficult to get to, uh, I know that we would both be game for it. So where were we at this morning? Right here. Right where that bend of the river is. Mm-hmm. And this is where, this is that big valley right back in here? Yep. Yep, so there's the three ridges. Mm-hmm. And there's just nowhere to get, no way to get to it. Yeah, these are the two only options. Right. How many, what is that, five one, miles? Two, three, four, five, six miles. Six miles. What, no, Which, what other, I mean, what would that, we gotta cross the river? We gotta cross the river. So we would start here? Yeah, start down here. Cross. And you hike up here and, and then, then steal four, three, four miles. Yeah. 
But if we kill one, then it's going to be all downhill. Downhill back. to the river. Yeah. That river is just the. The, the river is the problem. Not a problem. Right. It's an obstacle. It is. But that's what makes this so good in my mind is that you can't get to it. Right. 100%. So a lot of this unit has good access, um, road systems, um, easy to get to, and there's a lot of elk in there. Um, however, a lot of the unit is the opposite of that, very hard to get to, no access. And so we started looking at some maps and there was this one series of valleys and canyons that just stood out. Um, just seemed like a perfect place where elk would live and never be bothered. And so that's kind of where we decided we wanted to go. And of course, it was the hardest place to get to. And um, our only option to access it was to cross a river. to those elk went but that you know where the valley we want to get to on the left we're just gonna have to stay on this far on south that side stage that what looks like a flat to yes us, that sage flat stay on the south end of it. yes and those trees yep. and try to get that wind to go over yeah and then that way as the thermals start sucking down maybe they'll suck down the back side okay and then i don't know if you what are you gonna watch just a mouth as bad as i don't want to do this i'm gonna go over here okay um, and try to glass up those other drainages yeah. and see if, if, if those bulls don't come out in there, if they looped out of the bedding back Got it. a different direction or if there's bulls, I guess if there's any bulls in there. Yeah, I mean, we're just, we're kind of going to be in the game, but more than anything, I just want to get eyes on the, the ground and get a better feel for that valley. Sure. Um, and if there's even any elk in there. Yeah. I really hope so. Yeah. All right, well, good luck, buddy. Thanks. We'll see you. So once we knew we were close to elk, um, you know, we made the decision for Dustin to stay back and watch the mouth of that canyon. There were so many ways, little valleys and ridges for these elk to come out of the mouth. Um, and with the wind we had, we were only going to be able to watch a tiny little draw. So Dustin stayed back just to gain more intel because honestly, we didn't know what was in there. We didn't know how they were using that whole hillside or that whole canyon. So um, as bad as I wanted him to be there with me, if something went down or even to call for me, we just felt like it was, it was more important to gain intel. It's unbelievable. Oh, herds right there. Never heard anything like that. There's got to be a hundred elk right here within 200 yards. So it didn't take us long to realize we had made a pretty dang good call. 
to come up here um, because as soon as we got to the mouth of that canyon we could hear faint bugles close bugles cows calling it was um, just one of those moments where you're like you hope that's what you find when you go over the next ridge and I've done it my entire life what's over the next hill what's over the next hill this time it was everything we hoped for I know I'm like excited, but just grateful, man. I was sitting here and I said it before, right before he stepped out. I hadn't even shot. And I think I said it out loud. God, thank you for this moment, whether I kill him or not. Cause that was the most unbelievable experience of my life. Like hunting. I don't even know what he is. He's got points everywhere, just stacked. This is what I love most about bow hunting. You know, a night like this, I've experienced a lot of moments similar to this in bow hunting where it's just such a silent, unintrusive thing. This whole herd had no idea that the giant bull was even taken out. They're still bugling, screaming, cow calling, and he runs over there and in seconds is done and nothing ever knew. Um, and so as those bugles faded off in the distance, um, the last footsteps came by and we walked up to my bull of a lifetime. It's like, this is why I bow hunt. This is what I love so much about it. Um, such a, an intimate experience and um, just creates a really crazy feeling of gratefulness. Um, and um, that's why I do it. <laughs> dude. We got him, dude. Giant. God. It was the most unbelievable elk hunt of my life by a, by a long shot. Oh my god, dude. This is the exit right here. Dude, that is unbelievable. That's like 12? <laughs> 10? I mean, that's stupid. That's the biggest elk I've ever seen. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Look at his head and neck, dude. It's dude, his whole body. He's a dinosaur, bro. How's that even happen? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> dude. Hey. Congrats, man. Thank you, dude. Thanks. Honestly, it's hard for me to explain. I mean, I have hunted my whole life, and so much is put on that shot in, in that moment whenever you kill the animal. Um, this was the first time, I think, in my life that I stood there and felt completely, like, fulfilled, satisfied, whatever you want to call it, before I ever even shot. And I even vocally said out loud. Thank you, Lord, for this experience. That moment that we had those couple of hours listening to the elk and then having the whole herd come through in bow range and that giant bull, just, that's something I dream about. That's something as a bow hunter that you dream about happening. 
and just to hear that and experience that, it was the most unbelievable moment of my life as a bow hunter. Um, and so it, we celebrated, but we also just stood there in silence a little bit and just, because we all knew. We've never experienced that before, and we may never again in our lifetime see anything like that.